noises. Hi guys, in this episode of Wedger Watch, we take a look at a video published by the John Cooper Show on the 26th of April 2023. But just before we start, here is a quick recap of who Peter Folding is. As you guys remember, Peter Folding claims to have found Nicola Bully before anyone else within six minutes of his search, which started some ten days after Nicola Bully went missing. These claims, strangely, were made public some months after a member of the public discovered Nicola's body in the River Wire. These images have not yet been confirmed by any sonar imaging specialist as promised by Peter Folding, but he has shown this to a number of his close contacts, including a psychic, two true crime YouTubers, police divers, the media and others. But Peter Folden still maintains he will not release these images to the public. So let's get on to the video by the John Cooper Show with guest John Wedger. You know, John Wedger the alleger as always. So as you can see, this is the, the video. So so this girl, Nicola, um, was found, was it 25 days after she went in? The River Wire... The River Wire is tidal when you go, I think, towards Fleetwood, Blackpool, that area. I think that's where it goes into the sea, um, North Lancashire. Where she went in, I'm, I don't know it, but the pictures, it doesn't look like a particularly big river. It looks fast flowing. The time of year, there's a lot of water. Um, and we had had a lot of water and rain. So, And it was cold, very cold partly. You know, so that body may well have been kept down. But I don't think it's that deep. So, I think you'd struggle mm. to have that body underwater for a long time there. Um, it was found a mile away. Again. That's a, a strange turn of phrase, isn't it? That he would struggle, or anyone would struggle, to keep a body underwater. Why would somebody else struggle for that? Why is that the only hypothesis in that section there? You know, like there are many other other factors there that could have weighed it down. So you've got, like, um, the coat, for instance. I believe the coat actually created some air bubbles and that helped her float forward and put her further down to where she was. Um, but that could have also weighed her down. I could be completely wrong on that. It could have weighed her down and put her somebody somewhere else completely different. But there are different there are different scenarios that you have to put into, into perspective, really. Again... I'm not got much comment on that because I don't know the river and it, it's a lot of meanders in it. Would it have made like a mile? Turns. I'm not sure. It's a long way a mile mm. by the look of it where she's gone in. She might have, from what we've been told, again, you only go on what you've been told. She she was taken, uh, she was depressed and a heavy alcohol user. Maybe she's, she's tried to kill herself taking tablets or something and gone into the water and and she has gone for a swim, you know. And, uh... and I think that's just mad to to assume. Just because she's got those issues before doesn't mean that she's actually uh, used uh, the, any of the... Well, even if she has, we don't know. Not really to what extent. It wasn't really put out to the public really what was going on. Um, I know some channels claim to know like a lot about her medical history, but I'm, I'm, I'm far too uncomfortable... Uh, to be discussing someone's private history like that, that shouldn't, uh, uh, that shouldn't be made public, I don't think. Um, but then again, like I said, there's multiple hypotheses, isn't there? So, um, that's one theory, but why has he gone to the pills? Do you know what I mean? He, he's only put it down to one thing. I don't, I don't understand that. I don't understand that. And it's overcome her, and which may have been her attention. I don't know. She might swim. What do you think, though? What's your gut instinct on her? Well, 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 the weird stuff. Well, about why that would she is... swim? Everyone keeps saying it's dead shallow, so you're not going to be doing much swimming if it's so shallow, are you? Like you can float in a small amount of water, but swimming, you've got to have a really uh, deep amount of water because you've got to use your limbs to move. Why did the cadaver dogs not pick it up? Because they're incredibly sensitive. Animals. I mean, I I think they're brilliant. Um, the, the the canine um, support units the police have got, and their noses are good. I mean, I I knew a dog could pick up the scent 
of cannabis nearly 100 metres away. Yeah, but it's a, a completely different aspect, isn't it? You know, um, like, they... If she passed away in the water, like, the scent of that is within the water. Um, well, I would assume so, um, or close to where that she fell in. And if that is the point, like... How's how the dog supposed to know where she settled? It's it's a little bit. I think it's difficult for dogs trained in water to find find things. That's why they use so many different methods. Um, not just dogs. You know, they say, "Oh, why didn't the sonar find her? Why didn't the dogs find her? Why didn't the people find her?" There's loads of loads of methods that they use. Um, I think we're seeing now how difficult it actually is. You know, not smoked cannabis, stored cannabis. It was that good. So a rotting corpse, it's going to stink. It is going to stink. Uh, a waterborne uh, one. Have some well, respect, man. Um, she was found in reeds. So it she wasn't. In water. How did she get in there? That was in the COP report where she was found. There were no reeds in that area. So that's false. For a start, I don't know. I mean, that's did the river flood that high that that allowed for that? Mm. Again, we've not been given that sort of information. So we don't know, right? But a mile away from well, where... Well, no, they did They in. did say there was a storm, just and, and they did predict, didn't they, that there was going to be a storm and that she would actually rise around that date. The experts at the scene that predicted that were near enough bang on. Um, I think one was, actually. Yes, she would have gone down with her because it... it, it it was non-tidal, so it would have taken her that way. Um, At least he agrees with that. I really don't know. Um, it's difficult. It seems odd. But that's physics, isn't it, reads. really? What's the official story? Like, what's the official account? Well, what do you well, think? What, what are they telling us? It, it that, I think it looks like they're airing us. Yeah. Uh, but then there's there's things that the husband was into acting. and No, because no, was in the same they act. weren't airing on that at all. They constantly said that it was an accident and that she had fell into the river. And they went with that hypothesis for a long time and they were proven correct. And still, like, people won't go, oh, you know, you might actually be right. Completely disregard the theory. But the, the one thing that really sticks in my throat about this was that the police brought in a contractor, right, called Peter Falding. I've had, look, not a lot, bits of communication with Peter because I was setting up a group of professionals to look for missing people and Peter was put my way and there has been a little bit of audio trail between me and Peter in the past mm -hmm. no, not nothing big but uh, uh, um, when I was watching this um, I was watching this on um, a Super Chuffers channel um, he reacted to this um, and it was a really really good video because he spotted this bit where he says there's an audit trail which is kind of like uh, very specific, a little bit of threatening. Who knows? Um, at some point, maybe keeping I Pete was in check to, to link in with him. Not now. I'm not really interested because I moved away from all that stuff now. But back then, about two years ago, yeah, there was. You know, I knew a lot of people he knew, and I knew a guy that worked on his team. And these were a lot of them ex-professionals. He's got a lot of ex-military, a lot of ex-police that, that work for him, mm. especially certainly so, set him up himself up. But it's incredible network and, and, and very well facilitated. So he had helicopter. Yeah, he has got a network, hasn't he? He has got a network. Like he says, um, he gave himself, uh, Peter Folden gave himself away a bit, you know. He said 2% um, of the police and 2% of the fire service, 2% of the divers, you all add them all together and that's a little army. And I believe that's exactly what he's doing exactly what he's doing and that, to be honest with you i think they all collect each other like little pokemon cards and use each other copter he had uh dive teams he had rib boats he had everything he was kitted out ready to go not as uh, not as um, much as lowland rescue though uh another guy i know i'm not, I'm not going to name him because i've not got his permission but he's uh set himself up as um the the, the number one expert for sniffer dogs and has done a lot of good work for the Moors murders and all sorts of things and mm. um, especially in Northern Ireland he's found an incredible amount of bodies I think there's something like 50 bodies went missing and he found 49 of them police never he did 
and he's an expert and he's done stuff with me in the past this guy is a really lovely guy and he did stuff with peter so between the two of them they're pretty much cornering the market on this and of course they can't be silent. which is see see there you go cornering the market cornering the market it's this is a market people's lives and people's deaths are being marketed so when when you're like oh he's doing it free of charge he's doing it free of charge don't forget, keep keep in mind those cases that he does for your charge are selected. Right? Anybody else? Anybody else? Uh, uh, what the, you know, the country's charged for. Like, the, the victim family aren't re are rarely charged unless, unless they're doing, like, some kind of private contract with Peter Folden himself. But on the initial, if he's called in by the police, it's us that's charged. And to be quite honest with you... I think any of us would be like, yeah, take our tax money, take it, take it and find whoever it is that's missing. So, like, when someone says to a free of charge, it doesn't really affect our pocket as much as you think it would. Because, like, we're all paying out of our pocket. But, but when, like, the services that we're paying for, like that, are then tainted and you've got these egotistical people that are in control of it and they're playing with people's emotions to sell their business, there's a problem. There's a really, really big problem. And there's a problem with GDPR as well, like I say, with these images that he claims to have on Nicola Bully. If that is correct, if that is correct, do you think it's right that those images can be shared? I don't care if he's got a copyright, right? But surely that should be protected under Nicola Bully's family's private data. Like, it seems to be sickening how much information about this woman has been leaked to YouTubers and all that. It's sickening. It, I, I don't understand how, whether just because they're curious about how she died, right, when they're getting into the medical records and, you know, like, who her friends were, like, it's getting to the point now where it's creepy. It's creepy. Visiting graves and stuff like that. Visiting a grave. Like, that's strange, that. And I, I've never... Like, obviously, to an extent, I understood people when they wanted to go and visit the scene. I understood that because they wanted to go and help. Right? Some wanted just to know the gossip. I get that. Right? Some were investigating. But why go to the grave? What are you doing there? Especially, like, on certain days. I'd, oh, I don't get it. Creeped out at that. I've got to say that. Right. Where's well, the police? As I know, if you're going somewhere you shouldn't go, you know the old boy network will come in and say you're not doing it. Senior officers will, will shut you up, and if they don't shut you up, they'll fuck you up. Mm. Right. Mm. But let's go back on that a little bit. That didn't sound very good, did it? Need to go. Um, there's uh, another guy I know. I'm not, not going to name him because I've not got his permission, but he's. Uh, set himself up as um, the, the, the number one expert for sniffer dogs and has done a lot of good work for the Moors murders and all sorts of things. And mm. um, especially in Northern Ireland, he's found an incredible amount of bodies. I think there's something like 50 bodies went missing and he found 49 of them. Police never, he did. And he's an expert and he's done stuff with me in the past. This guy's a really lovely guy and he did stuff with Peter. So between the two of them, they're pretty much cornering the market on this and of course they can't be silenced right where's the police as i know if you're going somewhere you shouldn't go you know the old boy network will come in and say you're not the doing old it. boy Senior network will, will shut you up and if they don't shut you up they'll fuck you up mm. right but they can't do that to, to peter falling and they can't do it to these other people so they bring peter falling in and he does make a bold comment she's not in the water now that's based on what he's been told and what he knows. So, is he right or is he wrong in saying that? Well, he was justified in saying it because, you know, that's his experience and that, that's the information he's given. Uh, how does, how does knowing her personal information dictate whether she's in that water or not? How, like, when they had evidence at the scene that she was there last, right, in that area next to the water and she's not been seen... And they've got no other way of proving that she was kidnapped or anything like that. They, he declared that she was not there. He gave false hope. 
That's what he did. He wasn't justified in doing that. He wasn't. He wasn't justified in talking to the media. That wasn't his job. That's never been his job. He knows full well that wasn't his job. He jumped in on that case as soon as he bloody could. He knew that there wasn't no... He didn't get, like, that notoriety for the uh, non-disclosure agreement. And he jumped on it. He jumped on it so he could tell his little story. And we, we keep seeing him doing that. Still angers me to this day to see it. To talk and, about it, and think about it. It's a police's job. It's Lancashire police's job, not his job. It's their their screw up, not his. But no, it, it, all went it wrong, was his screw up. It was his screw up. He was the one that spoke to. He chose to do that. He wasn't forced to do that. He chose to do that. He wasn't forced to be a. a he didn't. Supposedly, he doesn't know Nicola Bully. Peter Folding don't. So why is he speaking up for her? Why was Mark Williams Thomas doing it? Why was Sky News doing it? Yeah, but they're not actually saying anything now. Strange, that, isn't it? And they did find the body. And and they're trying to gaslight the public as well with the old uh, Nicola Bully dive expert. How disgusting is that? That's not justice for Nicola Bully. That's completely out of the way justice for Nicola Bully. Even if you support Peter Folding, you know he didn't find her. You know he didn't find her. Even if he did, even if he claimed afterwards that he found her, at that time he told that family that she was not in that river. He told the public she was not in that river. Is he saying that someone with less experience than himself convinced him that his his one hundred percent target rate had just been fractured? But he was adamant. But he was only adamant when he checked up. When he come across it months later, bit wrong, that isn't it? In the river, albeit in the reeded area, oh. right? Which so he's right in saying it's not in the river because literally it's not, but technically it probably is. He gets a blame and he gets attacked so massively. This guy, yeah, because he was he disrespectful was by the press, by. Um, these TV talk shows and they're mullering him. He's getting boom, 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 boom. And I said to my mate, they're doing Nah, it. he's had a lot of support from the press. A lot of support. Look at how many sneakily press articles came out to support him. Goes and shows a lot about corruption, doesn't it? Start, start listening when that's happening. Start taking note because it's these newspapers, these journalists, they've got. Uh, plants inside, like the police force, in uh, in the medical field, in the fire service, you name it, they're everywhere. And they're all giving out information to the press, and it's just to undermine the police. And if they undermine the police, then I'm pretty sure it's so they can make a profit, so they can use third parties, because then the public don't have no trust in the police. So we're going to just request third parties, aren't we? But maybe I'm just paranoid. Two job on him. This seems like he's been set up, and it had a horrible vibe to it. What they were doing to to this, he's getting I've, too good at his job, basically. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's not accountable to the system. He, mm. he, he's independent. See what and I mean? I can... He's not accountable, and he needs to be accountable. And I really, really do believe, right, in my heart of hearts, that there definitely needs to be some regulator for the third party emergency services, and and we need to check. The qualifications they've got, the equipment they've got, and um, what disclosures they can make within the media, and their relationships within the media. Like, do you think, like, when um, Peter Folding went to Lancashire Police, do you think he told them about told them about his connections with these news reporters? Do you think that was disclosed straight away? Because I don't think it was. I don't think they would have had him at the scene if they knew that he was going to speak to photographers at the scene or he was going to speak to the media in little huddles. Because, obviously, they would have known he would have been a spokesperson then. Um, I think it's a load of rubbish, to be honest with you. But it goes to show there is a lot of connections and there is this... um, He says it's the old boys' club, but I think it's this 2% club that Peter Folding was on about. I think... He's collecting people from all around, so he's always got uh, some way in. He's always got a leg in. That's what I believe. I think something like that is going on. Um, because seeing what I've seen in the past couple of weeks shocked me at how low people could go. It's been really, really low. But I'm hoping one day... Um, 
some well it's not going to be gold command because they're not doing the jobs at the moment i'm quite disappointed at the strategies and the organizations from the police force at the moment but i really want to see uh, an overhaul on media management within the police and the relationship between the police the public and the media because there seems to be um some inappropriate relationships with with all four all three it it's, doesn't seem to be right and they seem to want to jump on anything they can do to discredit the police there's plenty of cases out there to discredit the police with look at georgina garsala he went missing in worthing sussex on the i think 7th of march you know like six years ago she's been she's been missing an extremely long amount of time i'll put some pictures up um when I when I edit this, but she's been there's been no trace of her. There's been no trace, right? And the police completely missed out on her. Complete like for a week they were just happy to say that she ran away, you know, because she had problems. Just like Nicola Bully, you know how they went out and told everyone about her personal information. They did the same with this girl. This girl was much younger, right? But her mum is still fighting. She still does meetups. She still puts posters out and banners. And she's honestly, she's trying so hard. But yet, her videos are hidden in the algorithm. Why? Yet, the police completely messed up her case. And yet, none of these journalists pick up on it. They don't pick up on it. And I don't understand why. What happened to Georgina Garsala? I really want to know. I re Maybe, you know, with her, I do think sometimes, um, are we looking for the wrong thing, right? Looking for, a pe looking for people can be extremely difficult. I did ask Georgina's mum about, like, a mobile phone and some of the devices that she had. Um, without looking at the notes, I can't remember the name of the devices, um, but I'm pretty sure she had uh, two phones uh, well, she at least had one phone with her, and she had um, a Nintendo uh, device. I think it was like to play games on. Um, but I'd have to double check. But maybe they're items we should be looking for. Maybe those carrier bags she had with her that day, or that handbag, was dumped somewhere. Like, maybe that might be the key to it, looking for those bits. Maybe they're in a hedgerow somewhere, deep, buried under soil somewhere. You know, it's a possibility. You know, was she wearing any jewellery on, on, when she went missing? That might be a question that I'd like to ask. But anyway, I've been on a bit of a tangent. You know, cases like that, you know, and um, Patrick Warren and David Spencer as well. They were, they're similar to this. Uh, they're similar to Georgina Garsala too. Um, they were they were treated as runaways. People all around the country started making sightings of them. And to be honest with you, I don't think those sightings were true. Just a bit like Holly Wells and Jessica Chapman. Joe Allen was all sightings of those all over the country. And it turns out they were already gone. And I think that's the case with uh, David Spencer and uh, Patrick Warren. I think that that was okay. I don't. I don't think they were alive much longer after they were taken. I think uh, someone would have seen something or done something. I think it was that late at night. I think it was on Boxing Day, like near midnight, and they were going to their brother's house. Um, you know, hang around. Well, they were going to one of their brother's house, and that one of them were mates. Um, sorry, I'm rambling, but I think about these cases all the time. You know. And when you see people like this just like arguing and treating them like they're nobody, I can't understand it. Maybe I'm soft like that, but I can't understand it. I can't understand how it doesn't keep them awake at night. How they, they've, they've lost their humanity. And that's what it looks like to me sometimes, sadly. But um, that's, your, that's your lot for Wedge to Watch tonight. This is episode 7. Um, thank you very much for watching.